Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel Jones Fan TV, man. Back action of this video. Like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Also, comment down below your thoughts on the video. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, man. Look, uh, so I was scrolling through Twitter, saw that uh, Warren Sharp, Sharp Football on Twitter, had put up a, a post about the most expensive offenses the last four years and the least expensive offenses over the last four years. And the Baltimore Ravens come in dead last with uh, $263 million spent on offense over the last four seasons. All right. And that's interesting from a couple perspectives. Right. Um, well, obviously, number one is the fact that, you know, Lamar Jackson did a lot with with less on offense. OK. Um, number two is that, you know, Greg Roman's offense didn't need a lot of um, expensive pieces, say, on the outside or in the backfield or anything like that. Um, but three, the main thing to me is that it's time for a new change, time for a new offensive approach. It's time to spend money on the offensive side of football. And here's why. Right. Um, one, like you say, like I said, you got Lamar Jackson. He is a superstar quarterback, and if you could keep him, surround him with with the proficient talent to help him shine and succeed, and really showcase what he can do. Right? Okay. Also, Greg Roman is no longer here. All right. So spending money on on, on wide receivers, trading for wide receivers, um, it didn't make it much sense with Greg Roman. We still wanted to see it. We still hope to see it. Now the Ravens did do. First round wide receivers in Hollywood and Bateman. And Greg Roman's offense showed that he can get one wide receiver to go off, right? He can get one wide receiver to potentially to 1,000 yards. His offense showed that he could do that. Pretty much everywhere he's been, he's shown that he can get one wide receiver to, to do that, all right? The issue is he couldn't do it with multiple guys, and that's the issue. But now you got a guy here like Ty Munkin, all right? Ty Munkin, I've said this before in previous videos, in Cleveland, he had 2,000-yard receivers with Odell and... and um and uh, uh Jarvis before in Tampa he's had seasons where he had three 600 yard receivers with a thousand yard receiver in there he had seasons where he's had four receivers over 700 yards okay that's highly productive that's a good passing game okay the Ravens need to take their time and energy to invest into this into this offense it just has to happen all right and that leads to a, a big thing about what this is Lamar Jackson's contract right now with this franchise tag and things like that coming up you franchise tag them, you're only hurting and handicapping yourself, right? If the Ravens were able to sign Lamar Jackson, if they were able to do anything that was able to come to in some sort of an agreement, they could lower his cap hit and really invest and really put something together on this offense that would make this offense take it to a whole nother level, right? And even in this draft, they got a 22nd pick. This receiver class has been called weaker uh, at the top because there's not a lot of guys who's like, oh yeah, this guy's an automatic top 10 pick and things like that. But to me, it's so... There's still good guys that you can get. So I, I don't really worry about that too much. But at 22, if if guys like Zay Flowers are still there and, and or Jordan Addison and um, Jackson Smith and Jigba from Ohio State, if, those, if guys like that are still there, I get the Ravens need cornerbacks. I do. But take another wide receiver. Take, a, take something else that you can add explosive to this offense. All right. And I'm looking through this list, right? Because, you know, we've got to have a list for context. So, the top 10 offenses, as far as money spent, the Colts, Cowboys, Green Bay, Buccaneers, Cleveland, Las Vegas, Tennessee, Chargers, Washington, San Francisco at, at number 10. Now, you look at that list. Out of that list, who was really good last year? San Francisco was one team that was good. Um, Chargers, Dallas. So that's three. That's really three out of ten teams that was really a good team last year, right? Um, so the point is, right? The Ravens don't need to be top five. They don't need to be top ten in spending. But you cannot be dead last. You can't be dead last, especially when it's time for having a new approach. You got a guy in here who actually knows how to incorporate um, more explosive players into his offense, like. I'm not saying for the Ravens to go out there and beat the Jacksonville Jaguars and spend crazy money in free agency. Obviously, they don't have that kind of money to spend anyway. But even if they did, I'm not saying for them to beat Jacksonville and spend all this money in free agency. Even though it worked for Jacksonville, obviously, getting Christian Kirk and Zay Jones, it actually ended up working for them. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is to be more progressive, right? Actually attack free agency, actually attack via the trades and try to have an offense that say, hey, look, we got multiple guys here that can get off. Right now, obviously, Ravens, they 
I'm not saying they, they they were devoid of drafting offensive talent. Obviously, you got you know you got Ronnie Stanley, he's a great offensive lineman. Mike Andrews is a great tight end. They was able to get him what third round. So they've done things in the past to help that. But when you look at spending and you're dead last in spending on offense, when I, I can assure you that if you flip to the other side of the ball, you aren't dead last in spending on defense. You need to bring some more balance to how you build this team. It can't be so one sided. It can't be so lopsided, right? That's why I like a guy like Lamar Jackson, where he asks for what he wants in the, in the contract negotiation. It's kind of like, well, you should probably give it to him, right? Well, Lamar Jackson is 45 and 16, I believe, as a starter. Um, I believe that's over like 70% of winning as a starter. Now, you can say QBs aren't a win stat. Uh, QB wins aren't, aren't a, uh, uh, just a, a QB stat alone. Okay, fine. Um, I can hear you. I can hear you on that. But when the Ravens play without Lamar Jackson, they aren't as good. Most teams aren't good with their starting quarterback. Fine. Okay. You know, you got all the counter arguments in there. But the point being is that you have an elite quarterback and you have surrounded him with the necessary weapons to actually push over the line in the playoffs. Right. When it's come to the playoffs, we've seen that we've seen these guys fold. A lot of talent fold. Lamar Jackson had one consistent talent in the playoffs. And that's the guy a lot of Ravens fans, um, like like the poke front end. And that was Hollywood Brown. If you look at Hollywood Brown in the playoffs, he came up clutch all the time in the playoffs. And I would like to see Hollywood be here um, in this office with Tom. Like, I thought that would have been great. But obviously, you know, things had to happen. He wasn't happy here, so, so they, they, they let him go. They, they traded him. If you want to be a, a serious contender, if you want to be a team that's taken seriously, if you want to be a team that's going to be able to have a deep run to the playoffs. You can't be 32nd and spend it on offense. You don't got to be number one. You don't got to be top five. Can we get up to 14, 15, somewhere in the middle of the pack? If you get this team to a middle of the pack and spend it, and you do it smartly, do it wisely, which I believe you're capable of doing, now you're talking about a team that could actually do something in the playoffs. I firmly believe that. Um, like I said, on this list, it's not a lot of teams that were good, but – um, the Buccaneers did win a championship over the last four years, you know, so there are things in here that says like, if you, if you spend the money wisely, it can help you get reach that next point, help you go to that next level. It can happen. Um, you don't need to be crazy. Like being like the Colts being at number one and really have nothing to show for it. That's not good. That's not what you want to see, but that's largely, that's largely because they spent all that time, you know, getting these older quarterbacks in and not really be invested in the quarterback position. But the point is, you have a quarterback. Put the town around the QB to make him as successful as possible. In my opinion, you have the offensive coordinator now. You have a guy who's going to run a real legitimate 21st century offense. Put the talent on the field. And even if, say, like, worst case scenario, Lamar Jackson is not your quarterback, right? Uh, I want Lamar Jackson to be here. He deserves the money. I would give him the deal. Say Lamar Jackson is not your quarterback. Whoever is your next QB is going to need a lot more help than Lamar Jackson needed. Whether it's a bridge veteran, whether it's a rookie, they're not going to be as good as Lamar Jackson. So they're going to need a lot more help, which means this 30 second is spending is not going to cut it. You're going to need to do more. It's going to have to be more done to cover up for the gaps that Lamar Jackson covered up. Simple as that. So for the Ravens, the combines, the combines here, obviously draft prospects are there. It's going to be some guys that are going to follow up and down the field. One of those guys needs to be in the Ravens uniform. And free agency coming right up around the corner, what, next next month, March. So it's time to spend money on offense like you spend money on defense. That way you can have a truly balanced and competitive football team. The fact that the Ravens even had a competent offense, it's a lot to do with Lamar Jackson. Now you got rid of Greg Roman, who was a major issue with why this offense was how it, how it was, why you couldn't get wide receivers to come here and, and everything like that. Things that were blaming Lamar Jackson that was really on Greg Roman. That problem is out the window. So now that that problem's out the window, take advantage and spend the money on offense. Like I said, you don't gotta jump to one, but jump to the middle of the pack at the very least. Um, and that's that's my that's my thoughts for today, man. Well, uh, we'll probably talk tomorrow about you know Harbaugh and EDC, you know what they're gonna say at the um the, the presser for the combine, but you know, but that's it for today, man. Yeah, let me know your thoughts on the video, and if you say to this point. Go hit that subscribe button, man. Uh, it's your boy Gabriel. Just another fan TV. I'm out.